Everyone knows the phrase survival of the fittest, and we also know it can have a few different meanings depending on when and how it's used. But when we talk about natural selection, where the phrase originated, it's easy to assume that fittest means best, or literally the physically fittest, but it doesn't. What fittest really refers to is whichever members of the species are best suited to their environment, and therefore more likely to be successful at reproducing. And while this might sometimes mean actually fitter or better at doing something, it's not a real requirement. A moth that is brown and lives in a pine forest is going to have more luck avoiding being eaten by predators than a white moth from the same species. But there is nothing intrinsically better about the brown moth, it just happens to be better suited to its environment. Had the two moths been living in a snowy birch forest, the roles would likely have been reversed, giving the advantage to the white moth who can now blend in more easily. In any environment there are pressures to survive, things like predators, food scarcity, and competitions from members of the same species. These are called selective pressures. And of course, no environment can support an unlimited population, which means only some members of the species will be able to reproduce when a population reaches its maximum. In the case of a tiger, there are only so many deer to eat, and if tiger populations are high, the environment cannot support them all. Or in the case of a deer, all those extra tiger mouths to feed mean deer are going to find it harder to survive. Similarly, in any species there is variation. Some moths are born brown, some are born white, some people have brown eyes, and some people have blue. The fastest, strongest tigers will be better at catching deer, and will be the ones to survive while the slowest and weakest deer will become tiger food, and the slowest tigers may starve to death if there aren't enough deer. Let's look at how this plays out over time. There is a forest of 10 tigers and 80 deer. This forest is at full capacity, it can't support any more of either species. Each animal is ranked from fastest to slowest. This variation in speed comes from the natural variation in every species, just like you might naturally be faster than your friend. To simplify, just assume that tiger hunts have a success rate of 1 in 10, and it takes one deer to feed one tiger for a year. The first year, the slowest eight deer become food for the fastest eight tigers, and the slowest two tigers, unable to catch any of the faster deer, die from starvation. So from both species, the slowest have died off, and the fastest now go on to reproduce, passing on the genes for speed to their offspring. By the next year, both populations have grown beyond the limits of the environment, to 108 deer and 12 tigers. Since the deer are overpopulated, the weakest third of the offspring die before reaching maturity, and two of the oldest perish too, as there is not enough grass to feed them all. This leaves 94, still above the forest's carrying capacity. This year's overpopulation means most of the deer are weakened from scarce food, and so all 12 tigers are easily fed, and 12 of the slowest deer are killed off. All of the tigers go on to reproduce. The following year the process is repeated for the deer, who now massively overpopulate to 120 individuals. This time, three quarters of the offspring die, and 12 of the oldest deer die too, due to a massive food shortage in the forest. Coming off last year's overpopulation of deer, there are now 18 tigers. Now that the deer population has stabilised back to 80 of the fittest members, only 8 tigers are able to be fed this year, and so the 10 slowest tigers starve to death. This process continues over and over and results in each generation of both tigers and deer getting faster, because only the fastest of each species get to pass their genetics on, resulting in on average faster generations as time progresses. And although this is massively sped up and simplified, hopefully you get the idea. There is no intention behind this selection, it is merely different species reacting and changing to the pressures of their environment. This can be distilled into three points. In any species there is variation. In this example, the variance was speed. But of course, there are many, many different variations that can have an effect on survival, all being played out at the same time. Not all members of a species make it to reproduction. The slowest and weakest tigers and deer were either hunted or starved before they were able to reproduce. And genes are passed on from each surviving generation. Each generation inherited their parents' traits for speed. Hopefully this has given you a basic understanding of natural selection, remember that these examples are extremely simplified. This video is the first of a three-part series, if you don't want to miss the next two, hit subscribe.